Hello everyone, I'm Marvin Itaz, Library Assistant here at the Seeking Public Library, and I'm here today with Judy Shearwaters. We're going to be talking about journaling and writing. So I'm going to go ahead and hand you over to Judy, and she's going to start our presentation. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for stopping in. The, web, the workshop I am bringing you today is uh, has to do with journaling, the benefits of journaling. I have uh, given this presentation to groups of uh, cancer patients, their support system, to Alzheimer's patients, to um, MS, but it, regardless whether you have physical pain or not, we all go through some type of emotional or maybe even physical pain in our life. And it all, all of that helps in your healing process to be able to journal. Journaling helps in that healing process. So reasons to journal, you reduce your stress and anxiety when you get it down on paper, you get it out of your brain, just get it onto paper. I don't know if you know anyone who's had cancer in the past, but when I talk with my cancer patients, I talk about vomiting on paper. They all understand that they just get it all out. And that's the same for us, even if we're not going through um, um, medical emergency at the time. We, if we just vomit all our emotions on paper, we seem to be able to take a deep breath and be able, we feel better, less stress. Uh, we can achieve goals, gain self-confidence, find inspiration, can track progress and growth in journaling, strengthen your memory and improve writing and communication skills. I love this, the idea that journaling acts as a free therapist you can have therapy with the only one who knows exactly how you are feeling. And it's free, just free. So um, that's another good benefit to journaling. And then uh, I wanted to bring to your attention different types of journals. You know, in my grandfather's day, great grandfather's day, my mom's day, people journaled about what happened today. They, yeah, I've got, uh, this is my great grandfather's journal. This is my grandfather's journal. This is one of my mom's. This is, uh, these are journals that I have kept uh, from this one that has nothing on the front to these other two. But back in the day, actually before my day, people didn't write their emotions down. They wrote, if you read through my great grandfather's or my grandfather's diaries, it would say things like, uh, we bailed a hundred bales of hay today, or we went out and we picked the corn today, or um, we went to um, uh, spelling school tonight. So there are all those different things. It was just about what they did from day to day. Nowadays, it's really gotten more into our emotions. And I love that idea because, again, you get those emotions out on paper. It relieves that stress. And tomorrow, well, of course, our, from the past, I think of great grandpa and grandpa's journals. And these journals were very plain, ordinary. They used pencil most of the time. So it's still, it's hard to read it. It's fading when it's a hundred years old. But today and tomorrow, what will we be using? The computer, maybe you want to do it on iPad. Maybe you feel comfortable writing your journal on your phone. I'm still not there. I can do it on an iPad and on computer, but uh, I'm most comfortable still with a pen and the paper but that's entirely up to you. Types of journals. There are so many different types of journals. You could have two or three journals going on at one time if you want. Um, there's one, just capture your thoughts as they happen. Just whatever you think of at the time, you just write it down. This is the type of journal that you might keep in your purse or in the car. And you write these different thoughts about what's happened just, just recently, you know, just within the last five minutes. 
maybe there's a type of dream journal. Maybe you're one of these that really likes to look into your dreams. So a dream journal would be very interesting to keep. A food journal. This is very popular today when people are trying to lose weight and get fit. They want to write everything down that they have eaten. Fitness journal, the same way. Gratitude journals are very popular today because it forces you to look at what you're thankful for. So many problems in the world today that we have to really, really look deep for what's going on good and uh, forcing ourselves to look at that goodness around us uh, and be thankful for it helps with that stress. Maybe you are a doodler at heart. You like to just draw things. So a sketch journal, sketch out your thoughts. You just write a few couple little sentences and you sketch it out. I'm not that creative, but I have known people who are. The day's events journal, just like my grandpa had, my great grandpa, just whatever happened today and that's it. Or to-do lists. You know, you learn so much about a person by their today list, believe it or not. What do you have on your today list or your to-do list for tomorrow? And a travel journal. This is a travel journal I've kept for a long time. Just different places that I have visited, uh, traveled, and that's kind of fun to keep too. Here's a creative, one of those creative journals where they pick up feathers or they pick up leaves or whatever. And they, so sketching and, and also just attaching these, there's a violet in there. One of my mom's favorite flowers, a little violet there. And then just simple things here, not even complete sentences. Mockingbirds singing and cooing and tweeting on the tree near the back fence. He talks back to us. It's just simple. It's just, but they're beautiful things that you see during the day. Uh, my next one, here's another one where they have probably done things through Photoshop or some creative fonts here and just pasted it into a journal. Or maybe this is a journal online and they're doing it that way. Here's another very creative. I am not this creative, but I found this one. I thought it was very interesting. It's a gratitude journal. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And then they have apples, fall, uh, family, acorns, bountiful, just all wonderful things to give thank you, thanks for. So where to start? Again, this is totally up to you. Do you want to get a notebook? Uh, you could get one of those, um, uh, I had it here, but what, just a plain old notebook that um, you would buy at Walmart. Doesn't have to be fancy. Or your iPad, your laptop. Maybe you're more comfortable sitting at your desktop. And then think about your purpose. All right, if you've never journaled before, what would be your purpose to start journaling? I mean, how would you want to see it used in the future. Do you want to do a blog? Many cancer patients start blogs just to, um, with cancer patients or any patients who are in a long-term illness, they are constantly having phone calls from loved ones. They say, how are you today? How are you today? How are you today? And after a while, they get very tired out telling 10 different people in one day, everything that's going on and how they're feeling. So some of these patients start blogs so that they can inform their friends and family. So every day it's a working blog. And some days they may not feel like blogging at all. And they'll just write on that day, they'll say, not feeling well. And that's it. And their friends and family know not to call them or whatever. So I think that's a beautiful idea. Um, maybe you want to keep it keep it completely private. Maybe you're going to write some very, very private things in there that you would never ever want anyone to know. I remember back when I was a teenager, we had those diaries that had locks on them and you had to keep the key. I kept the key around my neck. <laughs> I don't know if I had anything that was that private, but uh, I thought it was at the time. Um, Facebook page, 
you can also, you see people putting everything on Facebook page. And then afterwards, you could take it off your Facebook page, the words, and make it into a book. YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. You may want to start a YouTube channel someday. Um, and then a book, maybe eventually. I've helped so many cancer patients, Alzheimer's, MS patients, to develop their blog or their journal into a book, something that will help others to go through the same journey this person has gone on. So when you think of a long-term illness, you think that is a journey. It's a segment of your life that has to account for something. There's some reason that you're going through this. And so journaling helps. And then once you're done with that, you can put it in a book. Um, and I was going to tell you the name of the, uh, have a lady who just finished her book and it was all about her travel through her journey through um, her cancer and how she met beautiful people sitting there and receiving chemo along with her during the pandemic. Um, you could co-journal with a loved one. Maybe it's husband, wife, maybe you're both wanting to get a journal started. And it might be something that you want your view of a certain situation and his view too. So you could do that. Um, one cancer patient, uh, I encouraged her husband to join her in the process of writing the book. So we have one, the story of one incident in her experimental drugs that she was taking from her viewpoint and then the same situation in from his viewpoint as the support person who's there loving her and just hating what she's going through but still you know cheering her on so um it became a very beautiful book um and a shared journal. This, this is kind of fun where you do journal and then you hand it to a best friend or someone else and they journal the next page. So that's kind of a fun thing. So on each page, you want to set your date, your time, your location, the atmosphere. So when you think of writing a book, you think about the atmosphere. What is, what's going on around you? Um, so it could be during a, a time of family unrest. That's your atmosphere. It could be a time of family reunion. That's your atmosphere. And then who will your audience be? Your readers, will they be? For me, I've written three memoirs and my readers are really kind of baby boomers. They're people who have, have gone through their children, grandchildren, and they are looking to write down their memoirs. So this is who I want to encourage. You may just want to start every page with Dear Journal. In my day, it was Dear Diary. So you decide who your reader will be. Um, you can journal so many different things, emotions of today, your dreams, family life, questions that you might have. Journal about those questions. I wonder why. I wonder this, I wonder that. Um, a quote or scripture. I do have several journals where I've taken, like say the book of Psalms, especially. And one day I read Psalm one and then you write about it. How does that affect you? You can do the same thing with works of art. If you love works of art, you may find, a, you can download a picture off uh, online, cut it out or whatever glue it into your journal and write about how that picture affects you or just any famous quotes the same way. Um, I love doing that, sitting on the back porch in the early morning and being able to do that. Remember, do not be critical of yourself. Tell that critical editor within to take a hike. They are not that, that him, he or her are not to be along this ride. Grammar, technicality, not important at all when you're writing your journal. This is expressive. This is you, all about you. If you don't know how to spell a word, that's okay. It won't, it, you, nobody's going to critique you. 
Here's some famous diaries I thought I'd share with you. Virginia Woolf, um, and I've got some notes here, so I want to read to you. This is a fascinating insight into the art and mind of Virginia Woolf, who was a very popular um, author back in the early 1900s. Um, this was a collection by her husband from the personal record she kept from 1918 till weeks before her death in 1941. Between these points of time unfolds a private world, the anguish, the triumph, the creative vision of one of the greatest writers of the century. Sylvia Plath was a very popular poet. And uh, this is uh, roughly her life in the last 12 years. And then of course, Anne Frank, is very popular with everyone. Powerful reminder of the horrors of war um, when the Nazis occupied Holland in 1942. And then Scott's last expedition. Um, here, these are letters and diaries, uh, entries written in the last days that give a heart-rending account of the bravery and perseverance of men who attempted his perilous mission. So there's just four samples of people who took their diary, their journal entries and made them into books. But don't get me wrong here. I want you to understand a person does not have to be famous or wealthy to have something important to say to the world. So you may say, nobody would wanna read my, my journal or nobody would wanna read my memoir. You'd be surprised. I love reading stories of the ordinary person who really has something to share with the world. Okay, and again, don't be critical. Don't watch the clock. Don't say, oh, I've been sitting here for 20 minutes and haven't thought of a thing to write. Just do what, it, do what the clock does, keep going. I love that quote, don't give up. Consider this, develop a routine, a specific time each day. If you can do that, if you, I'm the freshest and my brain is the sharpest first thing in the morning, sometimes five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. And I kind of die off about nine o'clock at night, but you may be just the opposite. You might be a night bird and you want to wait until everybody's you know, gone to bed. And then you have that quiet house all to yourself. Um, personalize your journal, your journal. Make it very personal to you. And you can reread past entries for insights. Uh, am I the person who wrote this entry last month? Continually read back uh, different things that you, I like going back to years before and see what I did the same day, say five years ago. Take your journal wherever you go. Put it in your purse, in your car, in your glove compartment, whatever and have it readily available wherever you are so that you can write little snippets down uh, when it meets your brain. Um, with cancer patients, we call it chemo brain. I have foggy brain. Sometimes our brains just um, get too crowded with things that we're trying to, you know, scheduling of the day or whatever. Consider your journal writing time as a safe place for you, somewhere where you can settle in. Maybe it's a big, big uh, comfortable chair. You can settle in, you can sprawl out, whatever. You have your cup of coffee, hot tea, whatever your favorite drink, and you're going to be there for a while. And then what I like to tell people is you just sit. You don't have to write right away. Sit, take a deep breath, let it out and do that two or three times and think. Don't put the stress on yourself that, oh, I have to write. Maybe you don't have to write today. Or maybe your writing today is just one or two words. Maybe they're not even coherent at the time. You do not have to write a whole page or five pages. And yet the next day you may want to write and write and write and you don't want to stop. So play it by ear, be kind to yourself. And I like to, I like to say you write what you think as soon as you think it. 
if you have that, if you get in the habit, you have to get in the habit of carrying that journal with you all the time. Um, so that you don't want a huge thing to carry. Um, so that's why I think people do like the phone because it's so much easier. Uh, perhaps you're riding a subway or you're riding a bus or whatever. It's a perfect time or a good time for you to, a lot of people like to go to coffee shops and you think, well, coffee shops are people are all around, they're noisy or whatever, but I, I'm able to write in a coffee shop because I'm able to block that out around me. And sometimes I have picked up, a couple of times I've picked up on conversations, I'm overhearing other conversations and it triggers my brain as to, oh yeah, that happened to me or yeah, that's interesting. So comment on the pa on past journal entries. Last Friday, my entry was so negative. I needed to write that at the time. Today, I feel. Uh, last Tuesday, I was so optimistic. Why is it that today I feel? And again, I'm mostly talking to cancer patients here. And the emotions just go on a roller coaster. But yet, they do with us too. Even if you're not fighting um, a medical illness. Our emotions are so uncontrollable. So consider how you were feeling yesterday, and how you feel today. Sometimes you can get into a real down period of time and it helps to go back a couple of weeks maybe and see, well, I was so up back then. Why was that? Why was I so happy then? And now what can I do now to get me back in a good mood? So I think journals are really good for that. Here's some sample prompts. I've never talked about this, but the hardest lie I ever told was <laughs> the way it really was, it's dangerous to, this story is hidden in a box in the back of my mind. It begins. Mm. So what's in the back of your mind that you really would like to write about? Something like that could actually develop into a book. Hey, you could fictionalize it. And a lot of people have fictionalized their diaries or their journals to protect other people. You know, they've named people in their diaries. So when they go to fictionalize it, of course, they give them different names. But it's still their story. It's still their diary. <laughs> Speak the truth, even if your voice shakes. I love that one. Okay, here's some more um, sample prompts, words that heal. I want to be more hopeful. I want to be more patient. I want to be more, you fill in the blank. I feel like myself when, I feel amazing about myself when, three things that my best self would do that I'm currently not are. So many different prompts. You can actually go on Google and just, you can Google in the search bar, uh, writing prompts. Uh, on my, I have a YouTube channel for memoir writers. It's just called Judy Shear Waters. And I give a memoir writing prompt every week. And you are welcome to join there. Look for the positive. Loved ones reuniting, family, friends, support, uh, support people, co-workers, find peace in your relationships. And as far as sometimes we feel as though we're losing control, again, it doesn't have to be that we're going through a medical uh, urgency, a medical um, period of time. But don't you feel sometimes that you're just losing control? When I had small, I had three small children under the age of five, and I felt like a ringmaster with three rings going all at the same time, and they were all out of control. And I feel that sometimes if I had uh, really been journaling a lot, then I would have been able to relax my stress there. But at that a time like that, you think, what do I have control over? I have to have control over something. What do I have control over? And then how can you use that? 
you might have to prepare to have a difficult conversation with a loved one. Um, it could be perhaps a daughter or son are dating the wrong person and you want to have a serious conversation with them. Um, writing it all down first really helps you to get your, your thoughts in, in the right direction. Um, maybe there's a serious conversation you want to have with your spouse. Write it out. You, you can even do bullet points. You don't have to do whole long um, narrative. Do bullet points. These are the points I want to cover. And it helps to write it out ahead of time. I love the haiku. This is my favorite form of poetry. And I like to work with um, the haiku when I'm talking with cancer patients because the original form of the haiku had to do with nature or your emotions and your first two lines were one emotion and the third line had to be totally different. So uh, it's a five, seven, five syllables, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, three short lines, but your first two, if you are really, if I go into a room, a hospital room, and the cancer patient is really down, depressed, uh, just got bad news, more bad news, whatever, um, I want them to spit out those words. What are you feeling? Are you angry? Are you frustrated? Are you, uh, you want to kill? Are you mad? Are you, what? What is going through your head? And then the third line, they have to force themselves to think of something positive. That's hard to do sometimes when you're in pain or when you've gotten bad news. But here's hope renewed. Sunshine breaks through clouds on a dark and dreary day, an inkling of hope. Okay. I breathed the peace out and in came the wise colors, exploding my core. I like this burning desire girl. With third degree burns, she reads to cancer patients, brightening their worlds. She herself has, has medical situation there, but notice it's, and you can fudge on the syllables. So it's with third degree burns, she reads to cancer patients, seven, brightening their worlds. I guess you go brightening their worlds, that's five. So it's five, seven, five. And you can write it for anything, everything. Um, go out and sit under a tree and write about the rough bark and how rough it is and how scratchy it is. But then you have to turn around and think about the wonderful shade that that tree provides. You can find this type of diagram on Google to explain your feelings. It has all different things. So if you're scared, these are different words you can use, different emotions that would come anxious, submissive, helpless, uh, insignificant, discouraged, inadequate, peaceful, joyful. So just you would Google emotion, um, emotion diagram. Uh, and, and that helps you with a lot of those words that you can use. So I would challenge you, try it for three minutes. Just write for three minutes. Let your emotions flow. This is after you take those deep breaths. <laughs> Let your emotions flow. It's impossible to make a mistake. You don't have to go back and keep scratching through stuff. It's quite possible to improve your health and mental well-being. So just write. Ready? Set, go. <laughs> I do want to thank you for taking the time today for coming in. Um, I had fun. I hope you did too. You can contact me at sheermemoirs at gmail.com or I am on YouTube, Judy Sheer Waters. And I think I, I'm fairly new there. So I probably have only about 35 videos up there right now. I also, on that channel, I also interview uh, other memoir writing authors because it's fun to find out what made them put their memoir into publication.
not everybody wants to share their memoir with the world, but uh, when they do, it's, it's, uh, it's great for other people to see ordinary people who will do that and, and they become a blessing to, um, to those others who are reading it. So I want to wish you happy writing. And if you have any questions, please contact me.